Now let's consider the overall problem. So I've got a population pool like this, differential evolution. So this is my population pool. And so on. So that's my first individual. And so on. And I need to convert into what should be a population at the next time step. So the same what I do is I create the new population pool one by one. First I create the first individual of the new population pool, then I create the second individual of the new population pool, then I create the third individual of the new population pool, then I create the fourth individual of the new population pool, and finally I create the next nth individual of the population pool. So, and they are all randomly created. So let me give you the step of one and we'll repeat the step n times to get the population pool at time t plus one. Now, at every general time, I select one parent. So one parent gives rise to one child. So this is what I call as parent. So everybody reproduces first, this will reproduce, and this will reproduce, and this will reproduce, all the individual reproduce. So let's draw the parent explicitly, which is here. And this time, in order to have my parent meet, in order to have my parent produce a child, I give this parent a life partner to meet, and this is the life partner that it will have to meet, and this is my random candidate vector. So this is the same vector which we looked at around over here. So that's my random candidate vector V from above. Now it's not completely a random individual. It is created from random individuals. As in, we take the first random mutation strategy, which is here, it's XR1 plus F of XR2 minus XR3. So I create, I select a random three vectors, say this one, this one, and this one. And once I select N, random three vector, let's say this one, this one, this one, I say this is equal to F times this minus this, and that's the candidate vector, which is eventually coming from multiple parents. And I do what is the mating of these in differential evolution, it's called as a recombination of these two vectors. So I can apply any crossover that I like, there's absolutely no hard and fast rule about a specific kind of crossover being used. There are two ones which are Useful, uh, it's, this one is also called as a donor vector because it will donate some genes to the parent. So let me give in two types of crossovers or two types of recombinations which are possible. The first one is very similar to a scattered crossover. So let's draw the two individuals, the parent, so random numbers, I do not know what were the vectors, and so that's a parent, and this is the donor vector.
So now what I do is I do a normal scattered crossover of these two of the parent with the donor vector and my strategy is that crossover rate times crossover rate percent of genes into the child come from the donor vector. So let's call this thing as x of i, the ith individual, and let's call it as v of i, the donor vector for the generation of the candidate i. And we will do a scattered crossover kind of thing such that crossover rate times individual come from the donor vector which is around over here. So let me assume a crossover rate. So say crossover rate was 0 0.4. So 0 0.5, 5 into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into 0 0.4 is 2. So I select in two random genes and they come from this thing. So a minus 0.2 over here and a 1.2 over here and the rest come from the parent. So that's from the mutated vector. Now, this should not be a hard and fast rule that exactly this much. So I say that Stochastically, crossover rate percentage of genes should come from the first child and others from the second child. And let's repeat the steps. So I say if a random number is less than or equal to crossover rate, then they come from this, otherwise, they come from this. So let's say first time the random number wasn't less than 0 0.4. So it comes from this. Second time also it wasn't less than 0 0.4. Third time it was less than 0 0.4. Fourth time also it was less than 0 0.4. Or fifth time it wasn't. So it comes from here. So up means it will take it from the parent vector. And down means it will come from the donor vector. So 0 0.8 parent vector minus 0.1 parent vector, minus 0.1 donor, 0.8 donor, 1.8 vector, approximately by expectation. Stochastically, 2 will come from here and 3 will come from here. Of course, there are chances that 100% come from here and there are chances that 100% come from here. Both of them are likely situations. So these two have come from this thing and the others have come from here. Uh, now, if I apply it in this way, so what will happen is that there are chances that a child becomes exactly the same as a parent. It's a fair chance. There's a fair chance that child becomes exactly the same as a parent, which is not very good. So I stop that condition from happening externally. And by stopping that condition from happening externally, I will be ensuring that at least the donor vector donates one gene. So let's select one randomly. Let's say this one is selected randomly. So I say this one has to come from the donor vector. So down. The rest, if it's less than 0.4, it will be uh, down. Otherwise, it will be up. So it wasn't less than 0.4. It was less than 0.4. It wasn't less than 0.4. It was less than 0.4. So I get my candidate vector as 0.8 from the parent minus 0.2. This was actually directly transferred. I did not do anything, no randomization. This was directly transferred. The random gene was directly transferred. Candidate vector down 1.2. So this comes from the donor. This also comes from the donor and this also comes from the donor. So these three genes have come from the donor. And let's write this thing down a little bit more formally. So what I do is I say 
this was x this was v so let's call it as the candidate child uh, let's give it a name u of i the candidate child for the generation of the ith child and let's write down an expression for it so let's wait for one gene j and then we'll repeat it for all the genes so the candidate vector ui and the jth gene of it the candidate vector i and the jth gene of it it can either come from the donor or it can come from the parent and the condition is it will come from the donor if random number between 0 and 1 is less than or equal to cross over rate Now this has a problem that one gene needs to be directly transferred. So let me transfer one gene directly all. So I'm short circuiting it. When this becomes true, then this is not even checked. So uh, J is equal to the randomly chosen gene. Let the randomly chosen gene be uh, one. And similarly, this has to be the converse of it where r1 is a random chosen gene okay so that's a candidate vector and as it would be pretty obvious so what i've done is that for the new population, I had to generate one child. So let's say this was the eighth individual. So what I did, I took parent at one place and I took the random candidate vector at the other place, which was generated from mutation. It's a special type of reproduction because the parent is one and uh, this vector is a uh, hard work of three parents. So it's actually a reproduction between four parents, three who contributed this and one which is this parent itself okay but finally two parents produce one child so we looked at how do two parents produce one child and that's a candidate vector so this type of uh crossover is what is called as a binomial recombination So this one is a binomial recombination where we directly transform one gene and for the others cross over eight times it comes from the donor vector and the other times it comes from the random vector. Uh, let's have another recombination strategy and that matches more of the two point crossover and this one is called as the exponential. Remember the crossover eight times genes need to come from the donor vector. So let's draw the parent xi and the candidate, the random candidate vector or the donor vector. This was called as vi. random numbers whatever comes up from that step so now what do I do? I do a two point crossover making sure that the crossover 8 times individual comes from this vector so again let crossover 8 be 0 0.4 which means 0 0.4 into 5 1 2 3 4 5 which means two genes should come from here so i select the starting gene randomly let's say this one and then i copy one and two consecutively so it's a two point crossover so my child will become
where these genes have come from, these two have come from here. So first let's make in a change that it shouldn't be exactly two, there should be some stochasticity over it. So I say the number of genes from donor is given by crossover rate times the size of individual. This is normal. Plus a Gaussian random number with mean zero and standard deviation sigma. So it could be positive, negative. It could make two as three or as one. Normally it will be extremely small. Sometimes it could be large. Like if your number of genes are thousand, it could be two or three. So this will add some stochasticity. In the course over H. So let's say out of the blue it became 3. So this was by random which becomes 3. So let's again take a random starting vector and let's transfer 3 genes using this modified scheme. So I take the first one randomly. Let's say this one. Now I'll go 1, 2 and the problem is I've ended. Now I'll uh, assume that this one is actually a circular array. So after I go from here, I get here. So these three genes are taken from this one and these are taken from this one, from the parent. These three are from the donor vector, the ones with the blue tick. And the non-blue tick are the ones that are taken from parent. So again, it's a two-point crossover. Here I start over by taking it from the donor vector. I continue all the way here from taking it from the donor vector and beyond this I take it from the parent. So I started from here taking from the donor. I took from the donor and then I went into the parent. So it becomes... Point eight, two point three, zero point one and zero point three. So that's one, two, and three from the donor vector. And that's my candidate vector. So Again, let me write it in the form of an equation. Rather, let me write it in the form of a code. So, I say exponential recombination of what are the inputs? The parent is the input. And the donor vector already formed is the input. So I say UI is nothing but all the genes taken from the parent. Now I'll start copying the one from the donor vector. So I take a random starting point. This is my starting point. Starting gene. And I also take in L, which is crossover rate times individual size. Plus a Gaussian num random number, usually very small. Yeah. Seal it up. And then I start from the starting point and I go up to here. So I say for J is equal to one to L, starting from this number, I'll copy L genes into my candidate vector from the donor vector. I say R of U of, so my candidate vector, J gene starting from 
I won is instead taken from the donor vector Now, this had a problem that it could overshoot. So one, two, three, it overshot. One, two, three, it overshot. So I use the model arithmetic. So mod individual size. So where? n is equal to individual size. Okay, and it's assuming that it's zero indexed rather than one indexed. So it's zero indexed rather than one indexed. And then of course I return a UI candidate vector. So that's a candidate child vector. Okay, now let's go back and let's say what did we do so that's my population pool at time t. And I need to make a population pool at time t plus 1. So some of them already made. And suppose this is the eighth individual xi. So I took xi as it is, I created a random candidate vector vi, donor vector, I crossbred them and took made a vector ui. Now I cannot insert ui into the population pool because if I do that, this optimization would have never used the fitness function for the random mutation strategy. So what happens is, there is a war between these two candidates, Xi and Ui, and they both fight, and the better one of them will go, and this operation is called a selection. So remember, unlike genetic algorithm, I did not apply selection before, that only these individuals reproduce, everybody reproduces. So better off, Xi and Ui enter new population pool. If Ui is better, it'll go here. If Xi is better, it'll go here. So the better of Ui and Xi will go into the population pool. Uh, let us say that Ui was better and therefore Ui entered and the population pool which becomes the new individual, the eighth individual for the population at time t plus one. So again, uh, inherently extremely, extremely simple algorithm, differential evolution, so Xi is a random individual for all i in the population pool. All that you need to do is while stopping criterion, so that's a time zero for all individuals i. So first I create a random mutation vector, a random vector. So let's say VI is, let's follow the random strategy, XR1 plus F of XR2 minus XR3. So R1, R2 and R3 are random individuals. distinct. Now that's my mutation step. Now let's apply crossover. So I apply recombinations between Xi and Vi. So I just write down recombination 
between xi and vi. So if it's exponential, it is the code over here. And if it is binomial, it is this equation. So that's a binomial recombination. And once I get that, then I organize a fight between parent and child. It is again a ruthless world. The parent and the child will have to fight for survival. So if fitness of parent is better than minimization problem as of now, the fitness of the child then The parents survive, else the child survives. So, pretty simple algorithm. All that you really are doing is that you're creating a random vector which acts as a donor and then the donor gives some of its genes to a parent that produce a candidate vector. The child fights with the parent and the better of the two survive. As simple as that. An extremely simple algorithm. Now again, it's easy for me to say now that yes, convergence will happen because all that this algorithm is doing is it's making individuals go near each other, all random vectors pointing out to each other. So all the individuals are feeling some virtual forces, all the individuals are feeling some mutations, all the individuals are feeling some attraction towards each other. And because they all feel attraction towards each other, they all actually go towards each other because of all those kinds of mutations and the recombinations and therefore in some manner, the individuals are going out towards each other and therefore eventually they'll all meet as a point which is convergence. And again, the children are fitter than the parents strictly because if the parents are fitter, then we don't take the child. We take the fitter of the parent and the child. So if the child is good, we take the children. If the child is bad, we take the parents. So the children end up being reasonably better than the children and therefore the algorithm it actually does a lot of interesting things uh now there's a notation used over here so a differential evolution parameters can actually be given by mnemonics so we say the differential evolution that uses a random mutation strategy with a binomial crossover technique using two differential vectors. So all the parameters are here. Uh, two differential vectors means ui is vi is random candidate vector r1 plus f of r2 minus r3 plus f of R4 minus R5, so two differential vector, one and two. So you can actually specify the parameters around like this. And again, so unlike particle swap optimization, it's not always, it's some random, some strategies use best, otherwise they don't use the best. And therefore the mutation is what is random in nature that avoids premature convergence. And uh, unlike genetic algorithm, the mutation is coming from different vectors, which are, which show some traits of adaptive, large initially and small towards the end. And again, you can use exactly the same strategies of topologies in the differential evolution as well. So if you are using the best, it will use the best only from its neighbors, the topologies can be used as it is, as normal in the particle swarm optimization.